Hello and welcome to another Roblox tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing you spring constraints. These are super cool, cool constraints that can be used for a lot of applications in your Roblox games, and I really enjoy playing around with them. And in this video, I'll show you like all the properties, and I'll show you a little demonstration of what you can do with them, like so. And without further ado, let's get into the video. So let's begin with spring constraints. So spring constraints are exactly what they sound like. They're basically just springs. So here I have a part, and then we can duplicate this part. We have another part, and then let's go to model, create, and then create a spring. So springs have two attachments, and they basically just specify where you want the spring to start and end. So I'm just going to put an uh, attachment there, an attachment there, and here you have your spring. So let's just run this without changing any of the properties. You can see nothing really happens. There's like a specified length, and this length does not change when you start it. And this property is called the free length. And so this is the length that you want the spring to maintain. If you bring them any closer, they'll try to push out. If you bring them any farther, they'll try to pull in, just like a spring would do. And so up here in the properties, let's just go over the coils. All of this stuff is all visuals. I don't really need to go over it. And then down here, you have yourself all the spring stuff. So the damping is how delayed or like slowed down the effects are. So let me just anchor this one part. Let me actually bring it up real quick. Let me anchor it just so you can see it a little bit better. You can see it kind of springs a little bit. And depending on how much the damping is, it goes a little bit slower. So let's change damping to like 100. Let's hit play. You can see it's a lot slower. It's not as reactive or quick. And then let's go to limits. Limits are pretty self-explanatory. They define a max and min limit for your spring and this is regardless of the damping or any other physics things like it literally will not go past a certain amount so we play this you can see it automatically snaps into place let me go out and then turn on constraints and this allows me to simulate the constraints limits so if i go into game and i try moving this i can't even move it like farther than a certain amount because of the limits and we can also demo this inside of studio you can see I cannot move it anywhere past this at all. I can drag it for some reason. That's kind of stupid. But when I use the move tool, I can't do it. So let's go back to our spring. And then we have our max force, which is pretty self-explanatory. The max amount of force the coil of the spring can apply to your two parts. And the stiffness, which is basically the opposite of damping. It's how much force... Not how much force, it's basically how much force needs to be applied to the spring to bring it back to its free length. And that's regardless of the limit. So if we play this, again, we can shove that around and it can like move around. And more stiffness means more power, so to speak. And you can see that demonstrated in my ballista vi video if you watch that. And in that video, I use springs to simulate like a bow. And now I'm going to demo one of the most common uses of your hinge constraints, and that is in conjunction with a prismatic constraint. If you haven't seen that video, make sure to check it out. Because a prismatic constraint on its own is cool, but like it can't really simulate physics that well. So the best way to use it, not the best way, but for certain situations, like for example, when I was making a ballista, you need to use prismatic and spring constraints together. So let me just get rid of that. Here we have this part. Let's go duplicate it, make another part, and I'm going to anchor this bottom part for purposes of this demonstration. Make this a little bit smaller, create a prismatic constraint. Let me change my increment to 0.25, there we go, so we can line them up properly. Let's put that there down 
And then we can make another part right here, let's say. Anchor it. And then create a spring. And this is just a demonstration. It doesn't really do much. But like, let me actually move this. But it's a good demonstration. There we go. Now let's create my spring constraint right there. And if we were to play this, nothing much happens. But you can notice the really cool thing about this is the usually since the spring allows rotation on both uh, axes, usually it would just fall off and nothing would happen. But since the prismatic constraint only lets it slide on one axis, you can get really cool things like this, where you get like a little, this is like a punching bag, sort of. So this can like punch things, it can like go back and forth. And overall, it's just really cool. And you can do this in all axes, so you can do it like up and down, I can rotate that. And it's just a really cool combination of constraints. And that's when constraints are used best, in conjunction with one another. So this is a quick example. And stuff you can do with springs is you can also like tween any of their properties. I've never really used that, but it's always a possibility. And that's about it for this video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a quick one, but I'm kind of busy right now. And if you notice, I haven't really uploaded recently because, you know, school's starting. There's just a bunch of things going on, but I'll try to keep up the uploads. And in the next video, I'll probably make a video on rod constraints and that should be almost all of the constraints done i'm not going to go over stuff like welds or some other stuff like that because they're kind of self-explanatory but yeah that's about it for this video and i want to thank you for 500 subscribers that's a big milestone and it's halfway to a thousand which is absolutely amazing but that's it for this video make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed i hope you have a nice day and goodbye Thank you.